Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the second video that we're making on the things we know about Dendro from the most recent leaks. Hi. In this video, we're going to be covering mostly Bloom and its sub reactions. If you've missed the stuff with Wiccan, which is the Dendro plus Electro reaction, you can go check out the previous video. As always, for videos like this, this isn't meant to be a way to know exactly how good each thing is or anything like that. I'm probably going to make some judgments on how good I expect certain things to be, but at the end of the day, it's still not out. I have I haven't played it, I haven't play tested it, there's probably a lot of nuance that I'm missing. And so, the purpose of a video like this is mostly just to have fun talking about the kind of stuff that you can expect from Dendro. Get yourself ready for what you want to test, what you want to play when 3.0 comes out, if you want to play the day the patch gets released. With that out of the way, right, this is very subject to change, so don't take any of it too seriously. We're, we're kind of basically just using Dendro to talk about the game. But yeah, so, Bloom is what happens when Hydro meets Dendro. Bloom works in a way that is somewhat similar to vaporize and melt where there's a side that's like strong side quote unquote and a side that's weak side i don't think that the difference in the damage matters or it is changed by strong versus weak side but what does seem to get changed is the amount of elemental aura that gets removed on a reaction so if i do k as e that apply two units of cryo and then Bennett's E that apply two units of Pyro. As you can see, I remove all of the aura. But if I do it on the other order, start with Bennett E and then Kaya E, there's still some Pyro left. Doesn't last for too long, but there is still some left. From what we have seen and understood so far, it looks like Dendro on Hydro is the strong side. So Dendro will remove all of the Hydro, whereas Hydro on Dendro is the weak side where it will only remove part of the Dendro. Anyways, when you trigger that reaction, the reaction itself does not do damage. What it does is it creates a seed. Now those seeds are basically entities that you can interact with. If you don't interact with it, it will expire after about five seconds from what I understand. And once it does expire it'll explode and deal a decent amount of damage the amount of damage that you are going to be dealing will be the same as what you would get from overload bloom does self damage if you're close to it when it explodes and the self damage is 10 percent of the damage that it deals to enemies that being said what you can do is you can interact with these seeds and trigger sub reactions so those two sub reactions are hyper bloom and virgin Virgin, Hyper, Bloom, and Bloom explosions, they all do Dendro damage. If you trigger one of these reactions, they will do more damage than just letting the seed expire. But Bloom has does have a specific downside because unlike Hyper, Bloom, and Virgin, which are an element interacting with the seed, Bloom is a baseline reaction. And in baseline reactions, when you're trying to trigger a lot of those reactions, it can be difficult to make sure that it's always the same unit that's triggering the reaction. In Vaporize and Melt teams, it's generally somewhat easy to maintain the same unit as always triggering the reactions. But why is that? Well, the reason why that is, is because your carries that are dealing the damage aren't applying their element that quickly. Their goal is to deal damage with big multipliers that then get vaporized or melted. But because Bloom doesn't look at your multiplier because it's a transformative reaction, then you want quantity of Bloom over quality. You want to have a lot of Blooms. You want to generate as many as possible. So if you want to trigger a lot of Bloom, it becomes harder to make sure that it's always the same unit that's triggering them. What that means is if you don't interact with the Blooms, whose elemental mastery will they scale with? Well, they, they'll scale with whoever triggered the Bloom reaction. But if it's hard to make sure that it's only always the same unit that triggers them, then what are you going to do? You're going to build elemental mastery on all of your characters? Is bloom damage enough to justify doing that? Not really. And so the issue that you'll end up meeting is that you'll kind of have a soft limit on how many blooms you can generate if you try to only like focus on bloom damage and you don't interact with them, which means that either your hydro or dendro unit has to have a lot of EM and you want to make sure that they're always the one that, that are triggering bloom. Now you can either do that because hydro on dendro is the weak side. You can do that with relatively mid to fast hydro application and pretty fast dendro application and then your hydro unit will be the one to trigger it the biggest problem with that is that most of the hydro units we have have very good multipliers 
So it's kind of a shame to build them with EM just for Bloom. And so the option that I actually see being popular or relevant would be to either have an animal unit get an infusion with Hydro. So for example, you could Hydro infuse a Kazuha burst and make sure that Kazuha is the one triggering the Bloom because Kazuha is okay with building full EM anyways. Or you'll have your Dendro characters being the ones that are built with a lot of elemental mastery. Problem with that is because Dendro on Hydro is two times side, then that means it's gonna be very difficult to maintain enough Hydro Aura for your Dendro characters to always be the trigger. Now, how do you make it happen? Well, you kind of have to use very, very fast Hydro application or not that much Dendro. The biggest advantage that Hyper Bloom and Virgin have over Bloom is that as long as you're generating your seeds from Bloom, neither your Hydro or your Dendro can trigger Hyper Bloom. It's only your Electro, which means it's a lot easier to make sure that only one of your characters is triggering the reaction. On top of that, it deals more damage. But the downside is, well, if you have an Electro character, that's one less character that can generate Blooms, and Hyper Bloom is single target. Burgeon, on the other side, if you apply too much Pyro accidentally, the enemies will start burning, and once the enemies are burning, it is very hard to get them to stop. You need a lot of Hydro. And so, when you're if you're doing Burgeon, you're either going to be needing a lot of of Hydro or a very very small amount of Pyro. The two ways you can go about that is by having either uh, you, you can go for something like Tartalia as your own fielder because he applies a fuck ton of Hydro or you can go double Hydro. In Hyper Bloom as long as you got a, enough off field Electro to actually trigger the Blooms before you get too many of them because once you get five Blooms they start expiring even if it hasn't been five seconds. So you need to have your Electro damage being applied off field quickly enough that that doesn't happen. However, and this is very important, it doesn't actually need to be fast electro application. I'll show you guys what I mean. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack a heli turtle with Lisa, and then I'll attack it again. If I do this, right, and I attack him, and then I attack him again, it takes until the fourth attack until I can reapply Electro and trigger a second Superconduct. If I do it on different enemies, enemy number one, enemy number two, those two attacks quickly in a row were able to both trigger a reaction. They were both able to superconduct. Because internal cooldown is enemy specific. It's both ability specific and enemy specific. Which means the same ability can apply Electro even if it's quote unquote on internal cooldown, if it's on a new enemy. Now, because those seeds will disappear, DISAPPEAR! As soon as you hit them with Electro, then that, that means you can only apply an element to them once. After that, they're gone. Which means, whenever you hit a seed with Electro, whether it's on quote unquote on ICD or not, it'll be the first time you're attacking that specific seed with Electro. And because it's the first time you're attacking an entity with Electro, it will apply Electro, even if it's on internal cooldown. Which means characters that would struggle to trigger, for example, overload reactions multiple times because of internal cooldown will not necessarily struggle to trigger Hyper Blue. Specifically, in this case, I'm referring to Cookie. Cookie is able to hit enemies with Electro around her every 1.5 seconds, but because of the hit and time rule, she only ends up applying Electro once every two pulses of her E. But with Hyper Bloom, that doesn't matter because it'll always be the first pulse that hits the seed. Now because we really do want to have a lot of Hydro and Dendro application, and because the characters that we, we've been made aware of for 3.0, which are specifically Tirnari, Kole, and Dendro MC, do not have very quick Dendro application, then it seems like at the very least for 3.0, the best way to trigger a lot of blooms will be to have two dendro units and one very fast hydro applicator. So I would expect to see Child with double dendro plus electro being a possible team. Now because Child is not a healer and neither of our dendro units are healers, then that does leave some room for people that want to run a healer to use Cookie. And that's pretty relevant. Is it the only hydro loom team that will exist? Definitely not. I can definitely see either some double hydro Hydro or double dendro hyperbloom teams with a different hydro and just get slightly less blooms, or even just hyperbloom teams that have an on field electro, or heck, even hyperbloom teams that have one hydro, one electro, one dendro, and one animal unit, and try to trigger some chain reactions there, which we're gonna be calling salad because it's like soup but with vegetables. But looking at hyperbloom teams is probably gonna be the most complicated teams to like figure out. They won't be complicated to play. Genshin isn't a game that's complicated to play, sometimes it's complicated to to understand but actually playing it it's not that difficult and so if it's not something you want to think about if it's not something you want to bother then just don't and give theory crafters like a few weeks 
and they'll figure it out. But I, I'm very excited to try and figure it out for myself. Then finally, we're gonna look at virgin teams. When it comes to virgin teams, you will need a healer. A healer is not optional when it comes to virgin teams. What are your options? Well, in order to trigger virgin, you need to have hydro, you need to have dendro, and you need to have pyro. Virgin itself does dendro damage. And so that means that the value of something like Veridus and Venerer isn't that huge. What kind of teams will you be able to make? Well, you, you need to have those three, right? You need to have Hydro, you need to have Pyro, you need to have Dendro. But then, then what? Uh, you could go Geo just to have a shield, but honestly, a shield is likely not actually going to be enough to keep up with the self damage from Burgeon. Unless eventually we get a Dendro Shielder, Dendro Shields having higher resistance to Dendro damage than non-Dendro Shields. So potentially, eventually we'll have a Dendro Shielder, which means that it's possible to keep up with the self damage with just a shield. But for now, I wouldn't expect that, which means the Geo unit as a last slot, probably not the best. You could have an Animal unit as a last slot. Animal could be a fine option. Just like a grouper option or something. Bloom seeds can be pulled in by animal units like Venti. And so you can use an animal unit to help get better consistency on your bloom damage on the enemies. Electrode isn't really a good option because if you're triggering Hyper Bloom, you're removing the seed. So if you're triggering Hyper Bloom, you're not triggering Virgin. There's no point to having both an Electro and a Pyro unit when you're triggering Bloom. Pyro could be acceptable here, but I just don't see it being particularly relevant. It might be okay. But really, the, the main things I can I can expect to see are double Dendro, double Hydro, and double Pyro Virgin teams. How do you do double pyro virgin teams? Well, it's kind of not really double pyro. It's just Bennett Chengling. Basically, the only Hydro unit that will be able to keep up with both Chengling's pyro application and a Dendro unit's Dendro application is Child. Tartalia will be the only choice you have if you want to go double pyro with something like Bennett. At least that's what I expect. So you would do something like Child, Chengling, Bennett, Dendro. Yeah. Now, because virgin is AoE, if you're fighting multiple enemies, you have multiple instances of damage on each enemy. But from what I've seen, it does seem to be capped out at two, much like Swirl and Superconduct for the damage instances. So it's not going to be like that massive, but it is, it is relevant. And so what you do in something like that is you'd have Cheng Ling on the new Elemental Mastery set that we're getting. She'd be gaining 180 Elemental Mastery on top of 14% uh, attack. That'd be pretty good. That's one of the options that you were going to have. Uh, second option that you might have is Double Hydro. It would basically have to be on field Kokomi because if you're on field like Ayato with like Xingqiao, who's a pyro unit that can both apply all field pyro so they can proc the virgins and heal you? No one. We don't have that. Which means your healer has to be your hydro option, right? Because we don't have a dendro healer. So it has to be Kokomi. You could do a Kokomi double hydro. You could also do Kokomi with double dendro. Your power unit could either be something like Xiangling or something like Toma. I'm expecting that with double dendro, it'll be very, very difficult to make it work with Kokomi because her hydro app is not that quick. And so Toma's probably going to be overall better because Toma doesn't ap apply pyro nearly as much, which means you won't have to worry about burning nearly as much. But again, right, because each seed is a new entity, even if Toma's on quote-unquote ICD, he can still trigger the seeds. The last option that you'd have, right, is with Animo. And because certain Animo units have a way to apply Pyro, either by infusing or, in Jean's case, by triggering the Sunfire interaction, then you could use an Animo unit paired with Bennett as your, like, source of Pyro application. You could do Animo plus Bennett. So you could do something like Kazaha plus Bennett, or you could do something like Jean plus Bennett. In both of those cases, you would probably want to be running unit that's good on field hydro with gene i get a feeling that it'll be very very difficult to keep up with the aura so your best option will probably be child with kazuha i assume that it might be possible to do it with either child or ayato for bloom teams because cryo and dendro can coexist and because cryo and hydro can coexist kind of ish a little bit in freeze then it's very possible that you can use a cryo unit in your bloom team just to make sure that the enemies stay frozen and stay at the same place as the seeds are because the seeds don't explode immediately they only explode when you generate more than five or after five seconds so having the enemies stay in place can be a lot can be pretty relevant but yeah so that, that does it for the um archetypes i can see emerging from uh bloom reactions i'm very fucking excited for it uh, i hope you guys are too yeah if you've got any any questions you can go on twitch 
twitch.tv slash zef77 ask me questions there a lot of the stuff that i'm looking at is based on information i've gotten thanks to a few people that are interested in uh like league theory crafting so a special thanks to the uh, kusanali mains discord server for checking a few things for me which i very much appreciate uh, we can leave a link to that in the description and if you're seeing this when 3.0 comes out i'll be streaming for 24 hours on the patch release date so i'll be to see you there bye youtube